Awesome, awesome, awesome. We do have some people out because they're not feeling well. So we're going to take this moment, and those of you who are watching, I know some of you are watching. Let's go ahead and agree, Lord. We just pray for them right now. This is a time where if we don't become doers of the word, we're not shielded, is like we get. And some, if we get caught up in all these other things, often the enemy looks for those openings. So cover them with the blood, Lord. Let them have peace in their heart and help them to be faithful, to be dedicated to your word and prayer so that they're shielded in these last days. And Father, we bless you. Take this service, Father, and open the eyes of our understanding and help us be good ground. In Jesus' name, and everyone said... Amen. I've been having a blast this week. God's been answering prayers, been taking care of every need. And you know what? He'll do that for all of us if we just go to him every day, be faithful in what he's told us to do. You see, it's our obedience to him that causes him to legally protect us. It's our disobedience to him that opens the doors. Of, we don't want those kind of things. Say amen. Do you remember the story of the wine bag? Remember when Jesus taught about the anointings? He used an old garment and a new piece of cloth, and then he used a wine skin and new wine. Do you remember the story? He's talking about the anointing. You see, uh, clothing comes on, and the wine or the wine skin contains. So in order for us to release Jesus, we've got to be full of him. So every day when you meet with God, your job is to take that wineskin, rub it down with the presence of God so he can fill you with the Spirit. Why? Because you're a vessel and a container, and your job is to give Jesus out and release the anointing out of what he's filled you with. That means by the end of the day, you should be empty, and you should go back to God and get a refill. Say amen. So everyone say, it's not me that can heal anyone. It is God in me. So, okay, so let me show you, if you're watching, those watching by camera, you have a wineskin, it's called your spirit. And God lives in your spirit. So when you worship and when you praise the Lord, your spirit is being rubbed down and filled. Now, if you don't know that's what it's for, then you won't know, and so you'll go ahead and use that filling for your own life, which is okay, and all the things that you're doing. But when it comes time for somebody needing healing, somebody needing deliverance, it is the God in you you need to learn how to release that does the work. Remember Acts chapter 3 says that silver and gold we don't have, but what we do have will give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Rise up and walk. That's in Acts chapter 3. Remember the man at the gate, beautiful. He'd been there even during Jesus' time. Why didn't Jesus heal him? There's a time and there's a, 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 a season for everything. Can you say amen? And so you have what it takes. But if you don't give it out, then guess what? You're going to get empty. And throughout the day, you need to keep your glass full. I, I'm reaching for my glass there. But... Um, you need to keep your glass full. And that's why Christians oftentimes break down. They don't dump the bag at night and they don't release some stuff into God's hands so he can fill them every day, refreshing you, strengthening you. Say amen. Because if you, if you don't get a good dose of God every day, you're going to act out in the flesh. And everybody knows that no man or woman can please God when we're in our flesh. All right. Amen. So now we've been doing a series called Reigning in Life in Christ Jesus. Let's go ahead and get into it.
going to call this God's purpose and pattern of love. God's purpose and pattern of love. Now, God commanded Moses up in Mount Sinai, and he told him and showed him the pattern that he wanted certain things to be built and made. It says that, Moses, you follow me, and the pattern that I gave to you in the wilderness, I want you to be careful that you do everything according to that pattern. Say amen, everyone. Now, what the neat thing is that you have a pattern and a plan of God already in your spirit. Now, the Bible tells us before this earth was created, God knew you and had a plan for you. We're going to show you that in a minute. In him knowing you and that plan for you, right in your spirit is a blueprint of his pattern for your life. Everyone say amen. amen. And you know, when we're in the world and we don't have Jesus, we wander around in the flesh trying to find what God wants for us. We're doing the things that we like to do except for one thing, being with God who shows you your pattern and how for you to live a full and a blessed life. So guess what? You have, we have only ourselves to blame when things don't go right. When you come to church, and this is for you, brother, focus on only him. No distractions. When you do that, you're telling God you're second place. Don't do that. That's why you're not receiving all the benefits you need. So don't put God second place. Where do we put him? First place. Amen. Now we're going to get our scripture up there. And I want to read you my paragraph. Okay, so I want to say just, we just have a greeting paragraph for you. We are beginning to learn the things that God really wants us to learn. Learning it to, to do it his way. God has laid out before us our steps. Can you say amen? Not only that, but when we receive Jesus Christ in our heart, he put those steps already in there. So here's how it works. When we turn our life unto God and receive Jesus, he relights us. We get born again, and the plan and the purpose of God is now being brought up to your understanding, and hopefully if you go to him and talk with him, he'll lay out your steps and the dreams and the ideas and the visions that are pure in your heart. He's going to walk you to them, but if you're not paying attention, you're going to wander around like a lot of these other people. And I don't know about you, I don't like to wander around. How many of you have been shopping and you don't have the, the, the wherewithal to ask somebody where something is? You can see them. You go to the store and there they are, wandering around between the aisles. And you go, hey, 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 dummy, and everybody turns around. <laughs> anyway, we don't wander around through life, do we? Who guides our life? Who, is, who sent the Holy Spirit to... Teach us about all of these kingdom principles. Guess what? You have every kind of bad teaching in you that you learned when you were a kid. And it's time to wash all of that out. And you won't be able to do that if you don't spend quality time with God. And don't try to hide that you do because everybody can tell that you haven't been with God. And that's, don't do that game. Say amen. All right. So, let me continue to read my paragraph, and then we'll get this one. The Word gives us a pattern of how to live. The major key to seeing and doing this pattern is letting Jesus do it in us. He is our energy. I hear a lot of good preaching. You need to do this, and you need to go for that, and you need to work that out on your life. But what seems to be missing sometimes is God has to help you do that. Say amen. You can't do it on your own. If you could, there wouldn't be need of Jesus to come to die for you. You cannot do anything good on your own. Hello. So if you'll just surrender to that idea and say, God, help me to walk out my day. You watch your day come really beautifully together. Now, let me ask you, how many years had a near close perfect day before? Raise your hands. I want it on camera. Gosh sakes, you got to participate. All right. So here's some things I want to give you. The Holy Spirit's been sent to us to reveal, then guide us into the truth and according to the pattern that God has laid out in our heart. We're never going to know that. We don't spend quality time. We're just going to be still guessing at things. We shouldn't guess. We should walk with our Savior. Say amen. So do we have 
a clear pattern of our behavior, what it's supposed to be? Yes, we do in the Word of God. Amen. Jesus Christ is our example. Now, there's several things that the Scripture tells us about Jesus Christ. Number one, he's the chief cornerstone, which means every stone, every one of our lives are, be, are to be modeled after him, after his behavior. Not only that, but Jesus encourages us. He says, the works that I do shall you do also, and even greater works than these shall you do, because I go to be with my Father. That means he's going to sit at the right hand of the Father. He's going to back us. And not only that, by the help of the Holy Spirit, he's right there in our heart, and he's going to live through us. So therefore, we need to kind of get into the back seat and do what he does and kind of let him do the driving and give us the, um, what I call the guided tour. Now, I don't know about you. When I was in Germany, I, I was really out of my element. I didn't speak German. And so I got a taxi cab. And see, I put my hand in the hand of the taxi driver. Kind of like, think about that. So he had my life in his hand, and he needed to get me where I needed to go. Think about Jesus. Put your hand totally every day in the hand of Jesus. He's your taxi driver. Let him take you where he's already patterned in your heart where you should be. Aren't you blessed? And so stop living here. Stop living in your head, guessing and trying to figure things out. L listen and live from your childlike heart. I got a brother, bless his heart. He says, I can't understand the scripture. Well, you're trying to do it with your head. Even a child can understand what we preach here. Maybe that's why uh, we don't see too many people. They all think they're educated beyond their obedience. <laughs> Listen, the word of God, when taken in right and preached right, will make you the healthiest person on earth. Will restore you, will show you what to do, how to live, and really show you the pattern that God has laid out for you. How many know that all the promises of God are in him, yes, and in him, amen? All right. So let me give you a little thing. This is, I put this in as extra. The love of God is, is called charity. Charity is compassion in action. And Jesus is the embodiment of that pattern of love. Can you say amen? All right, we're ready to read our scripture. Hebrews chapter 8, 5 and 6 says, Who served the copy in the shadow of the heavenly things, as Moses was divinely instructed when he was about to make the tabernacle. That was to meet with God in the wilderness. For he said, see that you make all things according to the pattern shown you on the mountain. But now he has obtained a more excellent ministry, insomuch he is a mediator of a better covenant. That he is Jesus, which was established on better promises. Say amen. amen. All right. So we're going to cover these four areas. And if you take taking notes, number one, our Father's purpose for us. Our, our Father's purpose for us. Okay? And I know you know it's love, but we're going to go on. Two, God's family plan. Do you know God has a family plan? He gives us a model of how the family is supposed to be, and our job is to measure up to it. Say amen. Thirdly, treasure and picture his pattern in your heart. You see, where your treasure is, there's your heart also. If you don't treasure what God has put in your heart, you'll wander around trying one day to find it. And then fourthly, we draw close to God so that he in us carries out the plan. We draw close to God, he carries out the plan. We don't get close to God and we get in the way of the plan. Say, oh me. All right, so we're going to go to the first part. First point is our Father's purpose for us. Amen. Go with me to Ephesians chapter 1. Look at verse 3 through 6. You know, I think about that, those lights, those bright lights, and I think if we had maybe 
one here and one set here and here, it would brighten up the whole thing. So I'm just kind of thinking about that. We got some lights for our fellowship hall that seem bright in there, doesn't it? It's just two, two. They're LED. Anyway, so you ready? All right. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now listen to this. Look at the past tense. Who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. Where are we blessed? In Christ. Don't ever forget. You're also in the world, but you're also in Christ. Which one do you lend yourself to? Uh Uh-oh. And look at the next phrase. It's so beautiful. Verse 4. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy without blame before him in love, having predestinated us to the adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself. You see, because we have Jesus, the Father accepts us according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise and the glory of his grace, by which his, he has made us accepted. Every time we walk in Jesus, God is favoring us in the beloved. Who's the beloved? Say Jesus is his name. Amen. A couple points I want to give you. Number one, church, the born-again believers have Jesus in their hearts. That means... We have a perfect pattern and Jesus Christ in us to fulfill the details of that pattern and energize us to work us to the place of fulfilling it. Two, we are to surrender daily to his leadership so he can guide our steps fulfilling the pattern of God. He brings us into his purpose and to his plan and he guards us and shields us along the way. Number three, inside us, we have every spiritual gift, every spiritual gifting. So we need to follow the pattern of the use of those things by being led by the Spirit. Someone say amen. And fourthly, God's purpose and plans for all of us are written in his word. Have you been in there? Have you seen them? This is why we are to consult the word of God And help Jesus, allow Jesus to energize the patterns that God shows us and bears witness in our hearts. Say amen. Look at verse Jeremiah, look at this scripture, Jeremiah 28, or excuse me, 29, 11 and through 13. Most of you, I think you have this one memorized. It says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope that you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you. And you will, as you will seek me and, and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Amen. That's the key. And if your life is distracted, guess what? You're going to minimize your walk with God might just barely sneak through the gates and that'll be great by the grace of your wife's prayers and your husband's prayers but we're not supposed to sneak through the gates we're supposed to be escorted by the angels can you say amen so therefore guess what god is with you every day and he's monitoring your do's and your shouldn'ts so make sure you go to god and get all that dealt with so you continue to grow and continue to be blessed someone say amen All right, so let's look at Jeremiah 29. He says, I know your thoughts. I think towards you there are thoughts of peace and blessings. Can you say amen? Our second point, God's family plan. Go with me to Ephesians chapter 5. We're going to look at the family. Now, the Bible says that we are the family of God, both in heaven and earth. Can you say amen? So we can pick our friends, but we can't pick our family. So sometimes, some of your family is not going to be what you agree with, but they still love Jesus and they're part of the family. Can you say amen? So God doesn't want us divided off from one another. He doesn't want us separated from one another. God does not have a compartment plan. Hello? He unified plan. We are all, all of one family. There's only one church, many different names, many different branches, 
but only one church. So therefore, don't let the devil say, well, I, I don't agree with the church up the street. Well, if they're your brother and sister, then you need to be quiet because you're in dangerous zone. Satan loves to play that game. And we don't want that. Another thing, if you have somebody that's speaking, comes to you and talks to you all the time they're with you, and they're speaking something about somebody else and it's always negative, here's the thing you need to remember. What are they going to say about you when they left you? Hello? So don't hang around those people that are not going to edify or build you up if you can help it. Say amen. All right. So God's family. Fight. Ephesians chapter 5. Look at verse 22 through Ephesians 6, 4. Now, this is just a description of husbands, wives, fathers, children. Can you say amen? But it also relates to this. How many know that there are a lot of Christians dating God? They're only going to God when they have help, need of help. But how many know, hopefully now, that you have married God in your heart through Jesus Christ? You've been married to the Lord. Say amen. So you would be, in a sense... Of the wife of Jesus, wouldn't you? Yeah. These are types and shadows. You would be, in a sense, somebody who has authority who needs to take care of what's been given you. So, yes. So we can really relate to all of this. I'll try to relate it to it because there are plenty of you that are single. Some of you are married. This is to show you that this is the model that God wants us to work towards, knowing that God, this pattern, will help us achieve this if you let him. If you're falling short of this, it's because you're doing it. Surrender, ask God to help you, make you a better wife, make you a better husband, father, make you a better parent. Say amen. All right. Wives submit. The word submit means to come under a legal authority like a sergeant will come under a corporal. It means I want to submit, not I have to submit. It's that phrase which means because your man is living for God, you want to be a part and a partner with them. Wives submit yourself to your own husband as unto the Lord. Do you submit to God? Well, he's not the Lord, but as unto the Lord, be respectful. Say amen. amen. For the husband is the physical head of the wife, as, as Christ is the head of the church. He is the savior of the body, verse 24. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Now, I mean, that's within reason. If you've got a godly husband... You work the plan out. Can you say amen? Let's go on. Husbands, love. That's the word agape. Husbands, agape your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify, set her apart, and might cleanse her, wash her with his prayers, with the washing of the water by the word, that he might present it to himself. Oh, honey, you're the best. Glorious church, having not spot nor wrinkle or any such thing, and that he should be holy and without blemish. For no one ever hates his own flesh. Let's talk about a male. And, but he nourishes it and cherishes it, just as the Lord does his church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother, get, get your parents out of your marriage, and be joined to the wife. His wife, can you say amen? And the two shall become what? Notice the phrase, one flesh. Interesting. Interesting. That means when you agree on things, your prayers now are 10,000 times more powerful. That's why the enemy tries to get you in fighting and arguing and get you into yourself because as long as you're doing yourself in this, you won't please God. It's just that simple. And I'm sorry. I'm not trying to make you feel bad. I'm just trying to give you some reality. Listen, you run out into the freeway, you might get hit. Moving right along. Come on, laugh with me. Now, for no one ever hates his own flesh. So verse 30, for we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this is a great mystery, Paul says. And this is the thing. There are mysteries in the body of Christ and in the teachings of Jesus Christ but it takes a humble person who wants to be taught to pick them up and know them. Say amen. 
So it goes on. This is a great mystery, but I can uh, speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let each one of you in particular so love his own wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. Now, men, we love to be loved. But more than anything else, ladies, we want to be respected. If you don't respect us, then we can't receive your love. Works the other ways, ways, guys. The woman wants to be provided and protected and cared for. Hello? You do that, and you're going to have the best lover in the world. You see, marriage is designed to yield and designed to surrender and designed to keep Jesus. So in a marriage that's successful, Jesus stands between husband and wife and holds all the family together. Can I have an amen? That's what he does. Now it goes on further to say in, in Ephesians 6, 1. Listen, this is to the children. This is the Old Testament. It says, children, obey your parents in the Lord. Notice it says, in the Lord. For this is right. Honor your father and your mother, which is the first commandment, with promise. What's the promise? That it may be well with you. You want to be a sickly child? Disobey your parents all the time. You want to die early? Disobeying your parents. Don't do that. That's just somebody with a weak mind that doesn't know how to live for Jesus. Okay, that's, I'm just being serious. Okay? It says, that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. God wants his children living long, taken over. Can you say amen? Then it says, and you fathers... Do not provoke your children to wrath. Don't make them angry all the time. But bring them up in the training and the admonition of the Lord. Proverbs says, bring them up in the training of the Lord. And then when they get older, they'll keep returning to that quality training you gave them. When your child lives under your roof, you tell them what to do. Oh, but if I tell them. No, you see, you're already blown it. If you try to be your son or your daughter's friend, you've already blown it. You're their parent. Don't try to buddy up with them because in their mind, they disrespect the authority. We already see a rebellious bunch. Hello? Now, let me turn that over to the church. Aren't we married to Christ? Aren't we as a wife to honor and respect the Lord? Amen. You come into his house, you honor and respect him. When you go outside, if you want to play games, do it. But here, you are totally being respect. And guaranteed, you'll get something from God every time. How does he treat us? Unconditional love and meeting our needs. And it's not based on whether we're good or bad. It's based on who Jesus is. And you know what? You can blow it and blow it and blow it and still ask God to help, and he will. The problem is you need to help yourself by obeying him. Say amen. We won't stay there long because I don't want to get on, you know, all that kind of thing. So now we see the family plan. That's the model for every person who has a family that's married or chooses to get, want to get married. A couple of points. Number one, church, we are going to look as this as a pattern of God for his children and family and relationships. Two, for those of you who are single, let's see a little deeper to all of us being married to Christ. How does he treat us? How do we treat him? Thirdly, as a believer who follows Jesus Christ, we are to model our life according to the pattern laid out before us in God's word. Say amen. And fourthly, if we fall short in any degree, Jesus is in us. He's the one that helps us get back up and get on going. And for heaven's sakes, don't say, oh, Lord, did you see what I just did? <laughs> Why do we talk to God like he's a dummy? Yes. Did you see what I just did, saith God? Picked you up. Now follow me. And watch your life come together. Say amen. All right. My next point. Third point. Treasure and picture his pattern 
and his plan for your life. What you treasure, your heart's going to be there also. God lives in our heart, folks. And if we treasure him, he's going to open up our heart, show us the pattern, and then by the help of the Holy Spirit, he's going to step us through every walk. It's our distractions. It's the things that we allow part of our life that keeps us from God's best. So what you need to do, according to Hebrews chapter 12, it says, we have this great race that's set before us. So many witnesses that are watching us. So let's lay aside the, the weight and the, the, the sin that so easily trips us up and let us run with patience the race set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, here's the key, did you know you got heaven as your home already? You already marked to go. Nobody can keep you from that. So you have that hope that's in you. Everybody has this hope in them, purifies himself, even as he is pure. So God in you will work and continue to work and continue to work. And the more you bring yourself to God to an exposure, the more it all begins to work together and God begins to step you through the patterns that he's placed in your life before the foundations of the world and guaranteed you're going to love it. Can you say amen? All right, treasure. Go with me to Matthew 6, verse 19 through 21. Do not leave up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust and where thieves can break in and steal. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys, where thieves do not break in to steal. Did you see what that says? That tells you the devil who's a thief can't get into the heavenly things. So do you have children? Have you placed them into God's hands? Then take your hands off them. So he can't touch them. Oh. Have you placed your property, your house, your cars into God's hands? Then ask him to run them, cause them, make them run. How about your machinery and your business? How about your children? You see, when we do all that, I mentioned children before. When we do that, God, according to, I think it's in, in, um, I think it's in Jude, God is able to keep and to the day of redemption, all that we put in his hands. So I'd rather put it in God's hands, say amen, than put myself in my hands. Woo! How would you, Scott, feel if I was going to have you under my hand? Well, you wouldn't want that at all. Can you say amen? So let's go on. So it says, do not lay up for yourself treasures on earth, heavenly-minded folks, not earthly-minded, we're moth and destroy, okay? Then verse 20, lay up for yourself treasures in heaven. 21, for where your treasure is, there is your what? Don't we love God with all our heart? Then, then act like it, treasure that. Look at Matthew chapter 12, please, verse 35 through 37. Everyone say, I'm a good man. Everyone say, I'm a good person. Look what it says, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things. And an evil man out of the unsaved man, let's say it that way, out of the unsaved treasure of his heart bringeth forth evil things. Remember Jesus called his disciples, he says, which of you being evil can give good gifts to your children? How much more will your heavenly father give you the Holy Spirit to those that ask? You see, if our, we can give good gifts to people we love and might not even be saved, how much more will your God who's perfect give you the things, the Holy Spirit, which will monitor and monitor your life and see that you get all that is promised you. But you got to follow him and you got to be good at it and God will make you that way if you follow him in Jesus. Say amen. And then it goes on further to say, but I say to you that for every idle word that man shall speak, they will give an account of it in the day of judgment. 
two judgments is the great white throne judgment where all the wicked, Satan and all those cohorts, at the end of the millennial, will be there, we'll see that. But you and I are going to go to a special judgment called the judgment seat of Christ. That judgment seat happens to everybody in Christ, whether they die early and go to meet the Lord, or we get raptured and caught up to meet the Lord. Every one of us is going to stand individually before Jesus. Say amen, somebody. And we're going to give an account of what we did or didn't do in our walk with God. Now, if you're a sinner, you're not going to be there. You're at the end. You get the worst thing. If you're a child of God, you're going to have this. So God is going to mete out to each one of us according to the things we did for him and the love we had for others. So if you ushered and you didn't do it in love, you're not going to get one reward. And you'll say, Lord, how come... I'm not, I ushered for 40 years because you complained every day you ushered. God rewards praise, worship, gold, silver, and precious stone. Not wood, flesh, hay, and stubble. Say amen. You know I'm preaching real good. So therefore, we stand up before God, and we have to give an account. A whole life will come right before us. Now listen carefully. Not your whole life, but your life of Jesus. So there'll be a bunch of blank spaces. What are those, Lord? There's where you ask God to cleanse you because you didn't do what you were supposed to do. That's cleansed. Say amen. And when the stuff you did do is measured either 30, 60, 100 fold, how you did it, whether you did it grudgingly, you did it out of praise and worthy, or you did it just out of excitement. You just did it. You're going to be rewarded to the attitude in which you've done things. Say, I didn't know that, Pastor Kerry. So therefore, this should sober all of us up to the fact that every day you are being written down and a report card is being written out on you. Not by other people, by your angels and God, and they report daily on how you're doing. Everyone say, oh, me. <laughs> but actually, it's fun because guess what? We're children of God, not just sinners. So that means everything we do is being monitored and helped. So everything we say, everyone say, everything we say is going to either judge us or not. So stop talking negative. Stop talking all that junk. Say amen. And learn to speak life and health, encouragement. Do your best. God will help you. Why? Because as a man sows, so shall he also reap. Wow. You have your own ability to steer yourself into God, then to relax, let God take over, and obey him as you, he walks you through your life. Wonderful. Wonderful. And let's finish with you. Oh, hallelujah. Are you still with me? Okay, a couple of things. So now as children of God, by our words, we're justified. By our words, we're condemned. How did you get Jesus in your heart? That's how you got justified. Now, stop speaking all that other junk. By our words, we steer the outcome of our life. And if I told you, and you would agree with this, you're a product of what you've been saying all your life. If you've been talking smack and junk, so you're a product of that. So let's learn to rise above. Can you say amen? It's time we wake to the truth and not to religion. Last point, draw close to God. He in us carries out the plan of God. Say amen. Go with me to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. For we are his workmanship. Another word for that is masterpiece. Created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand, before the foundation of the world, that we should walk in them. How are we to walk before God? In, before him in love. We're to walk before God in love. Every day God is watching us and saying, oh, it's my kids. What are we bringing him?
Philippians chapter 2, look at verse 12 and 13. Because of what I just read and just said, therefore, my beloved, as you've always obeyed, not in my presence only, but also much more in my absence, work out your salvation. Now, you know that we work it out with God. We don't do it ourselves. We don't do works to get ourselves saved. But it goes on further and it tells us how. It says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is what? God who works in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. See, there's a pattern in you. Already listed. But the only way you're going to get your hands on it and be able to experience all that good stuff is you learning to follow God and become obedient to him. And Lord, when we, you folks, when we blow it, the Lord is not going to condemn you or get on your case. He's going to pick you up and say, let's get on, let's get on with it. And literally, in the New Testament, we have no excuse of not growing. Can you say amen? Do you want to be a Christian that's run by your emotions, can never count on anything? God needs to use you as a lively stone. That means he needs to build us up a spiritual house. He, he can't build us up a spiritual house, Scott, if all of us are off the wall all the time. <laughs> Each one, he's stacking, like a local church, he's stacking every one of them that are coming here, making us into a tabernacle of praise. You're a lively stone, you're a lively stone, you're a lively, you're a lively, you're a lively stone, you're a lively stone, and we're being stacked up, made into a spiritual house of praise. Amen. Then there's a warning. If anybody would come against that spiritual house of praise, God will destroy them. That's why we need to focus on being unified, growing, bringing people here, and not be so concerned what the enemy's doing, because if we're being God, we blind the devil, and he can't get close enough to really irritate us. He always uses the ones that are always in the peripheral bleachers somewhere to stir up messes. Thank God we don't have any of those. God has screened you and blessed you and fulfilled you. Now, say this with me. I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I have the pattern of God in me. And he's going to show me every step to take. I'm guarded. I'm shielded. And God lines out my steps. Therefore, I am blessed coming in. And I'm blessed going out. And I follow closely my shepherd and my God. In Jesus' name, give him a praise, will you?